Good evening, you're watching SG News. Coming up, thousands of jobs, but at what cost? We'll be finding out. Dan Kemp is on the sofa to talk about the latest news, and my guests tonight are Josh Moore and Paul Preston, who are making a film based in the region. Welcome to SG News, I'm Richard Morris. Now it's over to Dan Kemp for the news headlines. Hello there. A critical deal has been struck by Seafish, the UK authority on seafood. It means that for the next three years, businesses and countries must abide by new fishing allowances in our region, as set out by the authority. Paul Williams, the CEO of Seafish, has hailed it a huge success. I was going to say the seafood industry, but actually I think it's the wider food industry and maybe even wider than that into other retail sectors as well in looking at ensuring that supply chains are not only sustainable in terms of, of the, the products, but also that they're ethically sustainable in the sense of the, the people who are involved in the supply chain being sensibly treated, reasonably treated, and having a reasonable level of welfare. So that's something new that, that's come into this corporate plan. Former Lord Mayor of Hull, Mary Glue, presented cheques to her mayoral charities yesterday. Matthew's Hub for Young People, the Women's Centre on Preston Road and the Teenage Cancer Trust Unit at Castle Hill Hospital were all beneficiaries of £28,748 worth of money raised during the Lord Mayor's centenary year. Councillor Glue said she was delighted to present the cheques. Yes, wonderful, isn't it? So in 11 months, 22 events... We uh, raised that. I, uh, I think that people, hundreds of people in this city have supported the events and I thank them for their generosity. And we all remember the story of Stephen Sutton whose story has inspired fundraising that has raised millions for cancer charities. One of the things he wanted to do was go skydiving so people from all over the country, with the aid of the whole Teenage Cancer Trust Ward at Castle Hill Hospital, descended on Hibblestow and broke the world record for the most people skydiving. Charity spokesperson Sheila Brazer said it was a touching occasion. But one of the things that he wanted to do um, was to have some part in a skydive, a world record attempt for skydive. And this happened a couple of weeks ago at Hibblestow. The previous skydive um, record had been set in America last September and stood at 286. We had to get 287 to be able to beat the record. We got 403. And that's all from me. You can get in touch in the usual ways, phone or email. Bye for now. Now, we all know about the upcoming Sasha Baron Cohen film Grimsby, but there's a duo here on the sofa who are hoping to portray the region in a slightly better way. Josh Moore and Paul Preston are from Wingmen Films, and their first production is called, conveniently, Wingmen. Hello to both of you. Hello. Hi. I just want to say um, it's a co-production between Wingmen Films and Shoot J. Moore Films, which is Josh's company. Oh, right. OK, yeah. so yeah. it's already kind of like quite a sort of big production in, in, in almost. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about bringing people together in, in, in our city hall who want to make the film happen, really. And, and Shoot J. Moore have done some great, great stuff for a lot of um, musicians in Hull. And because obviously our project is about a musician, it was just a great working relationship to try and create. So tell me a little bit about how the project started. You know, how, how, how did this all get going, really? Well, um, me and my friend Adrian Lauf, we've been involved in writing short films for the last um, five years. We started off doing plays and moved to short films, and we always wanted to do a, a feature film. And we came up with the idea for the concept about a year ago, about a, a wannabe rapper trying to make it in, in the industry. So in about January time, we committed to, to write this script, and we met the BAFTA-winning producer, um, Chris Hees, who's from Hull. And he was really supportive in helping us to make that first step of like telling people we are going to make this film. So then we sat down and we brought in another writer because me and Adrian are also acting in the film. It was important for us to, to bring in another writer to, to help challenge us a little bit because subconsciously we might not write to our, our, we might write to our strengths and not challenge ourselves. So we brought in a new writer called Corpus Miles and we developed the script. Um, it came in a, a bit too long to begin with, so Chris helped us shorten it a little bit. And then we just started to push it around people in Hull to see if it had it's a garner of interest, really. So you're saying that you had to shorten the script down. How, how long is the sort of final piece going to be? What, do, what are you sort the of The film will for? come in. It usually translates at about a minute per page. The script is 91 uh, pages at the moment. Um, it was originally 120 pages. Which, wow. <laughs> I mean, a lot of films are two hours long, but we was working with certain constraints financially 
and um, full production. We've only got a certain, uh, certain amount of days to film. So we had to really shorten it down. It's, the script is stronger for it. We had to take out some funny scenes, but as a whole, the, the script works a lot better. It's more balanced. So tell me a little bit about why Hull, you know, why, why, why the venue there? Um, a lot of the film is set in Hull. It does move to London towards the end of the film, um, for, for, the, for the ending. But it's more write what you know. We knew a lot of musicians in Hull, um, a, lot of, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of passionate people in the city, and especially with the capital of the city of culture coming in 2017. There's, there's a, a big buzz right now I in the city. So, yeah, it is set in Hull, but Hull's not a central character in the film. It's just we are hiding, uh, hiding the fact it's Hull or, or shouting about the facts. It's just a city. So tell me a little bit about obviously what the storyline is because everyone at home is going to be watching this and thinking what what is this you know we know that it's in Hull we know that obviously you've got quite a bit of background in what you're doing yeah. what's the actual storyline about I'll try and keep it as brief as possible so the, the story we've got a, um, a documentary filmmaker called Adrian Coulson who's traveling the country looking for hidden urban poetry and he, he's struggling to find it he's kind of a gun for hire documentary filmmaker and he stumbles across these two uh, well, a musician and his manager, and he decides that this is the story, these two characters are the story. It's a very character-driven piece. But in order to make um, exceptional television, he starts to manipulate scenarios that are in the film. So we see these two characters who are both lifelong best friends going on this journey trying to get this track produced, but whilst also yeah, getting set up against a lot of things that stand in the way. And it's a really sweet, moving story about friendship as well. It's got a lot of universal themes of, of love, trust, ambition. Um, and it, yeah, it, it is is a really interesting story. And there's, uh, I believe, one of the characters is called F Skittles, although yeah. the F is silent. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how that sort of came well, came to fruition. Um, when when in, in a scene when the his manager um, Scott Meekings is getting interviewed, he gets asked um, why Skittles, and he says, "Oh well, I was looking at other rappers, and I looked at Eminem." And he's kind of drawn the comparison that Eminem is based after Eminem's. Yes, yes. But then he goes, it's not spelt the same, he's reminded that. And he goes, oh yeah, well it's not spelt the same either, it's, it's um, a silent F, it's for Skittles. <laughs> so it is pronounced Skittles and the F is, believe it or not, silent. Right, okay. Okay, so are there many rappers in Hull? I mean, I wasn't really aware that there were. There's a big, big music scene in Hull, actually. There's a quite a lot of musicians about. We have the Humber Street Session coming up on the 1st of August, and that really shows off a lot of local talent from bands to, to, to rappers. And... Um, You've worked with Nancy's Boy quite a lot. Yeah, Nancy's Boy's um, probably one of the more popular ones that uh, gets around in the city of Hull. And uh, you've and you've kind of done it in an almost kind of mockumentary, really, haven't you? Yeah. Which is that kind of like really popular thing, almost like in the Loop and the Office, yeah. the examples you gave. So tell me a little bit about how that works in this instance. I mean, obviously, you say it's very character driven, but yeah. tell me how how that sort of comes through. Well, when we was doing the idea, the idea was just about this musician. It wasn't always going to be a, a mockumentary documentary format. And then we started to look at how can we film it in such a way where we can film a little bit quicker than you would a normal film, so it's less set up. And we started looking at a documentary angle, and this film wouldn't work now as a, a standard piece of fiction. It, the mockumentary format really lends itself to the story um, as well. So that's how it came about. It was more to do with the, the necessity to film quickly. That idea came about, and as we incorporated it, it just, it just became better because of that mockumentary style. Right, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back to you in a couple of minutes. So, you know, we want to hear more. <laughs> so stay there. Uh, you're watching Estuary News. Coming up later, we find out what's happening in the local news with Dan Kemp. And the very same man will also bring you all the sports news. Now, investment on the banks of the Humber is cementing the future and creating thousands of jobs, but is it coming at the cost of the local environment? New projects like the one at Birkinshaw's, Birkinshaw's Cover aim to tackle this problem, as Dave Nunn went to find out. Companies like Able UK are bringing investment to the Humber, but arguably at a cost to the local environment. However, that's changing thanks to sponsorship of projects like Birkinshaw's Covered across the road from the Able site. We're just coming to the end of the funding that's been provided by Able UK. You know, they're developing all the land around here. And uh, Able UK provided £50,000 over this past year uh, for habitat conservation work at this site, including the creation of the new ponds here, uh, a lot of bat roosts that have gone in. Uh, they've supported local volunteers by uh, funding the local conservation group, they've provided equipment um, and uh, they've also put in a new bridge to allow us to enable 
to allow us to get into the the other third of the woodland. The support of companies such as Able has been essential to projects like this one at Birkinshaw's Covert. And then in 2012 we managed to get the help of uh, National Grid where the 400 kV power line passes through the site to turn that into a wildlife corridor. So that was a big boost to the site. But this past year Able's su uh, support through the landfill tax has uh, completely transformed the site. Obviously, developments such as the energy park alongside factories and refineries do have an effect on the environment. Alan says that by all the companies cooperating with the Humber Nature Partnership, the impact can be minimised. And I think without Humber Inca, as it was, and the Nature Partnership now, companies do want to, they, first of all they want to be on good terms with local people, they want to involve local people, make the local people part of what they're doing, but also they, they do, like all of us, think the environment is an important part of things and I think when they have a major impact on the environment, such as the refinery, such as Abel, such as any Centrica, any of our other members, um, we, uh, if we're there to help them, we can obviously make sure that wildlife is catered for in their everyday activities and in projects such as this. Now still with me in the studio are Josh Moore and Paul Preston who are making a film in the local area. So tell me a little bit about the filming techniques that you're employing for this because obviously it's that kind of mockumentary almost like interview style thing that you're that you're aiming for yeah. really. Well yeah so so what would what we're looking to do is, is to, it's very sort of run and gun style. It's it's reacting to what happens that you don't expect, you know. So you you'd be felt it's it's going to just going to have a cameraman and a sound man, and uh, that's it really. And the director's obviously going to be watching. Um, that's basically how these things are filmed. If you watch something like a Louis Theroux documentary, it's going to be very similar to that, where you've just got one person asking a question and they're interviewing. So. So if people are watching at home, they're expecting, you know, huge, you know, camera crews to sort of go and invade Hall City Centre, that probably isn't going to be happening. No, no. <laughs> as, as Paul said, we're looking to do this um, to make it as easy as possible to shoot it in the time we've got. And shooting it this way is, is definitely going to make that a lot easier for us. So obviously because it's, you know, very character driven, you're looking for sort of very lovable characters. You're looking for people who are really going to stand out on screen. So tell me about how the character development started, really. Yeah, the characters at first started off quite two-dimensional. Um, one character was a bit of an idiot, the other one was the brains behind the, the pair. Um, and as we started to, to do a backstory with our writer Kofi, it started to look at what, what's the weaknesses, what, what faults do these have, because they're only human beings, and how they both rely on each other. And it's, I think the friendship is the lovable aspect of, of these characters. I think people are really attached to the friendship between them both rather than each one individually. Because there, there are these parts in the film where they are separate and you start to see the real characters come out when they're both separated from each other. But as I think it's the friendship that is really sweet and, and lovable. And they're quite, they are sort of quite inept though at what they do, but obviously you're aiming more at the friendship, but they're also quite bad at what they're attempting to sort of do really, aren't they? Well, yeah, you will <laughs> find out at the end whether they're good or bad at what they do. It's, um, I think it's the, the friendship and the, the the positivity that they give each other and the confidence that they give each other, that's what drives them forward. And it's, it's kind of, there's a line in one of the characters, Dale, he says he's all about the journey, not the destination. So he just enjoys each day by day, whether they're going to succeed or not. It's not about the goal for him, it's all about the destination, uh, the journey, sorry. But the other character, he's the opposite. He's like, let's just get to the goal. Let's, we've got to get there. That's where everything lies at the end of it. So when they do get to the end, it's, it's interesting to see how it plays out. So it's quite a small team, but what kind of budget are we talking about? I mean, is it actually a surprising amount of money in sort of small or big terms? There's definitely a, a monetary value attached to it. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff in kind, like we've got the van hire has, has come uh, for free for us, which would have been a massive chunk of the budget because it is like a road move where there's a lot of transportation from A to B. Um, a lot of stuff, we've got the office space, production space, and also locations, they're coming. A lot of people are helping us with this. A lot of music we're getting for free as well. Um, so th uh, the monetary value would be a pretty sizable budget, but because we're putting it around to local businesses as well, 
it's we're getting a lot of uh, sponsorship so it's, it's really helpful at catering we've got a few days catering um, supplied to us as well and you're also looking at the possibility of extras as well so if people are watching this at home and they're thinking how on earth can i get involved in this how how can they go about doing that um, the, the best way to keep up to date with what's going on with castings and extras is the facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash wingmen film that's the best way that's where we're posting updates regularly and where we're going to be and if people want to get involved like we are looking for as much support and help as we can. I mean, we would never turn anyone away who wanted to be involved in the making of a feature film, especially within the city and the region. So what's the time frame for production? I mean, have you started, have you started doing the preliminary work or are you, you know, really get it, get it go, well, going out now and doing the yeah, filming? Yeah, castings and locations have been getting done this week, finalised this week. There's still a few locations to find and a few um, castings to finalise. So that is, yeah, the production is ongoing and it's, it's changing every day as, as we move forward. And when is the sort of big reveal for it? When are you planning to sort of show it to the world? Well, the people who are spon sponsoring the film, we've given them a date of the 30th of September to see the film um, at that point. The, we do aim to get into the festivals by the end of the year. So it, it's a quick turnaround for a film, but we've, because of the way we're shooting the star we're going for, it shouldn't be too much to, to edit and do post-production on the film. And what kind of festivals are we talking about? I mean, are we talking about, you know, International Cannes <laughs> Film oh. Festival or, you know, where, where are we going with this? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, the Cannes would be amazing. But yeah, we, we are going to focus on um, festivals that are really, that really specialise in comedy and mockumentary style. I mean, there's no point putting it into a horror festival because it won't, it won't even get in a horror <laughs> festival. But yeah, so we are really going to focus on, on as many festivals as we can. So to get it out there to, to a big international audience, if, if we can, and show the region, like, as it is. I mean, a lot of people come up and say the accents that the characters have are really what sell this film to them as investors and sponsors. Perfect. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming in. It's thank been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, and best of luck with it, and I can't wait to see it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, he ran through to the studio after the guests left. It's Dan Kemp with the latest local news. Hello, how are you? Good evening. What's so funny? I don't, I don't know. You, you, you just make me laugh whenever you're around. Um, tell tell, tell you. me what you've... It's, it is a compliment. Tell yes. me what you've been finding. I'll take it as a compliment. Yep, the first story is the Driffield Show and that the rural communities and farmers in East Yorkshire are set to benefit from a grant worth of £2 million, or over £2 million, that was announced at the show this week. And I think that's fantastic news for farmers in our area, really, because it's a time where... Farmers are kind of struggling, people see the farmers are struggling, and now they've got £2.122 million pounds that were unveiled by the NFU Vice President Guy Smith at the show, and that's to increase farm productivity, support micro, small and start businesses, and fa farm diversification, provision of rural tourism, provision of rural services, support for cultural heritage activities, and increasing forestry productivity. That is a very long list of things. Yeah, I well, didn't realise quite how big the Driffield show is, actually, until a, we covered it's it It's a massive this year. deal, and obviously they've taken that as the platform to yeah. announce this funding, and I think it should be good Celebrated. for the future. Celebrated. Yes, exactly. Um, as for the what Driffield show. Yeah. T tell me what else you found. Well, another story, another kind of rural story. This is opposition to the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust's proposal for a new 900 thousand pound visitor centre at Spurn Point. Right. And I went I went to see this uh, I suppose a couple of weeks ago and they've since done a, a meeting at Easington Town Hall which was chaired by Graeme Stewart who's the MP right. for Beverly and Holderness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And basically they've got to decide if this contra this controversial plan is kind of worth going for. There's a lot of right. positives and a lot of negatives to it. The positives are that it'll boost visitor numbers and they're hoping that around forty thousand people every year will turn up to Spurn Point as a result of it. And obviously we'll be able to have education facilities and hoping it's going to raise 20 million pounds in the next 25 years but on the other hand it's quite a rural environment and you're going to risk the tourism of course affecting the wildlife affecting the, the land this around is, this is of course always the concern isn't yeah. it you know you can you can build a tourist center you can make something you know something like that as, as popular as you like but if it's going to impact the wildlife, which is ultimately the reason the people point, are going, yeah, yeah, the reason exactly. people are going, that's that might not work and out too. They well. have got an existing visitor facility at the Bluebell Visitor Centre, but the problem with that is that the Kilnsey Flood Bank, which currently protects it, is expected to fail within the next twenty years. Ah, so expected they to could fail. use that's a facility they've already got. Yes, but it wouldn't last as long. Whereas so the new facility is planned to have flood prevention of its own. But it'll be very expensive. Well, £900,000. Yes, that's <laughs> very expensive. I even got that in my back pocket. <laughs> what else have you got? Well, a good, a good news story, I would say, is that the Hilton Hotel, which was set for uh, Hull, head of the City of Culture, has been, well, is expected to get given the go-ahead next week right. by the City Council. That's plans for the new 
site at the former Lexington Avenue nightclub, which was a bit of a nightclub in the 80s and the 90s, I think, and it's been a bit of a wasteland ever since. That's going to be recommended for approval by the whole city council. So is, it. is this all building up because of city of culture, because of um, other investments going into the region with a new ferry terminal? Or, you well, know, I think it would be a bit of both, but obviously people see that Hull is a place on the up and that people are putting money into it, things such as city of culture. And the, the opening date for this is 2017. So obviously I would have thought a company like Hilton probably wouldn't be pressing ahead to do something within the next 18 months unless they thought it would be worth yeah. it. But of course, they've got that application in now, and they're clearly thinking ahead and yep. you know thinking for their long term. Well, the council are expected to grant it its approval for a 167 bedroom complex, Perfect. and I think that's more good news for the area. It is indeed. Thank you very much, Dan. And um, well, you're now going to dash through because he's going to do a quick sprint now through to our other studio to bring you all the sports news. National reports are suggesting Hull City striker Nikitsi Jelovic is interested in Greek side Olympiakos. The Croatian frontman was amongst the City players to express that he wanted to leave following relegation to the Championship. Meanwhile, reports in the local media are suggesting that centre-half James Chester is attracting the interest of Premier League Crystal Palace, forcing the Tigers to place an asking price of £8 million on the Welsh international's head. Grimsby Town boss Paul Hurst featured in the side's 6-0 win against Brig on Wednesday evening. The Mariner side was mainly made up of youth teamers, with some first-team players also getting game time. John Paul Pittman netted a hat-trick, whilst James Root hit two and Padre Garmon scored the other. Scunthorpe United have taken former Hull City and Liverpool winger Paul Anderson on trial. The 27-year-old, who was released by Ipswich Town at the end of last season, is training with the side despite interest from other clubs, including Fulham and Wigan Athletic. Hull FC will be looking to cement their top eight finish when they take on the Wigan Warriors at the KC Stadium on Thursday. The side will be without captain Gareth Ellis and Leon Price for the 8pm kickoff. Meanwhile, Hull KR have announced their 19-man squad for their clash with St Helens on Friday. KR must win and hope other results go their way. Aaron Ollett and John Berebza are in included in the Robins squad, whilst Albert Kelly is rested for head of next weekend's Challenge Cup semi-final. That's all for now. Don't forget to get in contact with any stories you have for us. You can call 01472-31553, email sport at estuary.tv or find us on Facebook or Twitter. And that's all for the sport. That's it for tonight. Thank you very much to my guests Josh Moore and Paul Preston. Keep your eyes and ears open for potential filming dates in Hull soon. If you have a news story for us, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages. Details are on the screen or email news at estuary.tv or phone Grimsby 01472 31553. Until tomorrow, good evening. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV's weather. Mainly dry on Friday with some hazy sunny spells at first, turning cloudier through the day with the possibility of showers and a maximum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. Sunshine and showers on Saturday, some of which will be heavy.